Trojan family, Trojan family, what's up, man? USCJ here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. I hope everybody's having a blessed morning so far. I hope you get, guys getting ready to get up, get out, and make some things happen this morning. Listen, we want to talk about Arizona State, what we can expect, uh, what we can look forward, and um, as it relates to our offense, I'm not even really going to touch on that because I think that we're going to have a significant amount of improvement um, coming from Caleb Williams coming from our whole offensive unit. Yes, Caleb Williams was sort of kind of in a slump, but like Lincoln Riley said, Lincoln Riley said this. He said, as it relates to Caleb, he said no other quarterback can make that throw that he made, that last throw that he made. Caleb Williams, you guys seen him throw that dart to Jordan Addison. As a result, USC won the game. I think Caleb Williams is going to see the field a little better. I think he's going to make a significant amount of, uh, of improvement from from Oregon State game to this game, and uh, I think this is going to be a, a tremendous bounce back game for our whole offense as a whole. Uh, we had no issues with rushing; it was just the passing. So I think that you're going to see some significant amount of improvement as it relates to Arizona State. Uh, I want to show you guys um, who they are as it relates to um, some of their impact players who I think that we need to contain. It's a couple of guys that I think we need to contain. They still have a, a, a big guy, uh, 6'4", 245 pound uh, linebacker, um, who, who's probably like the heart and soul of their team, um, Kyle Soul. Um, he, he's the big time guy. He's a big time guy in the middle. But I think it's the offensive guys, the quarterback I want to show you, and I want to show you the running back. Um, as it relates to their, their numbers, Arizona State is um, their number 10 in rushing defense, uh, 182.5 uh, per game. Uh, so I think we're going to explode on the Russian, the, the Russian side of the ball. Um, as it relates to uh, their passing defense, they're 194.5. Uh, in total defense, they're 330, 377. So I think we're going to explode on offense. I think we're going to have some big-time impact play on offense. And uh, we can look for that. For that to happen. And by the way, let me just say this. I think Arizona State's not given enough credit for how they did go to Oklahoma State and, and put up a serious fight. I think all the way to the fourth quarter, I started seeing Oklahoma State pull away, but the game ended up being, I think, 17 to 35. But Arizona State, I thought Arizona State was going to be better this year, but you guys know they lost to Eastern Michigan. And coincidentally, they that's when they fired uh, their their coach, Herm Edwards, after that game because, yes, it was, it was unacceptable uh, for Pac-12 standards. Um, losing against Eastern Michigan. So let's look at these guys. These are a couple of guys that I think is going to be impact players uh, or are their impact players, but these are a couple of guys that I think we need to shut down. Then I'm going to show you our guy on defense who I think is going to be the impact player for us. You guys take a look at this. This is the one guy I feel like we need to be concerned about. He's the grad transfer from uh, from my Wyoming, um, Xavion Valadez. Um, he had like a thousand yard season. Um, I think a couple thousand yard seasons actually in his um, in his college career. Uh, most recently, it was one in uh, 2021. He had 20, 209 carries for 100, well, 1,063 yards and like six score, six touchdowns. So I think um, he's a pretty productive guy. Um, and he also had like 23 receptions, 233 yards while he was there. Um, he's like six feet, 200 pounds. Um, he's a solid guy, as you guys can see here. Let me give you guys another picture here. You see here, this is a big guy right here. And so um, I think if we contain him, we'll be uh, we'll be we'll, we'll be uh, in some pretty good shape. We want to want to attack the run just like we did. Um, Pretty much at Oregon State, you've seen Thule come up big. You've seen a couple guys come up big. You've seen even some of the safeties. We've seen even Damani Jackson come up a couple times and make some nice stops. Uh, but this guy, this guy is a guy that we want to keep intact. Man, Utah held him to about 30 yards um, on last Saturday. So, But I think he was productive in the Oklahoma State game. Um, when they played in Oklahoma State, they, they took pretty – this is another picture of him right here. They took um, to the – I'm not going to say to the wire wire, but it went into the fourth quarter. Uh, where it was pretty close, and then Oklahoma State started pulling away at the end. And I think the score was 35-17 or something like that. So Arizona State played them. When I seen that game, I said Arizona State's going to be tougher than what people thought. 
However, they, they continue to uh, go in the wrong direction, end up firing their coach because you guys know they lost against um, Eastern, Eastern Michigan, which was, uh, which was uh, totally, totally unacceptable, in, in a, especially as it relates to being a Pac-12 school. So this is him right here. This is who the guy I think we need to contain, this guy right here, Xavion Valaday. Here's the other guy you, you, I guess we could consider um, that we have to worry about. Um, it's Emory Jones. He transferred from Florida. Um, he's, he's a dual-threat quarterback. And, um, of course, you know we got to contain him, force him to throw the ball because I think his, his biggest strength is running the ball. Um, you know, of course, his 2022 stats is uh, he only has like 100, well, 800 and, 818 yards, um, which is which is uh, 78th in the country out of Division One double A, out of Division One uh, football, 78th in the country, 818 yards. That's hardly nothing. He only has three TDs thrown. Um, that's tied for 102nd in the country. Um, he has two INTs. Um, that's tied for 43rd in the country. And then his, his QBR is like 31. That's like 112th in the country. So, so he's really not that good of a QB. Um, so he, he's the guy that we would have to worry about, but that's the guy we want to contain. Those are his numbers right there. And just showing you a couple of more pictures of him here. Let's see. That's another picture of him here. He's the grad transfer from, uh, well, he's a transfer from Florida. There you see him there at Florida. Most of the time you're going to see him running. So that's the guy we want to try to contain. That's the guy that we need to contain. Uh, Emory Jones. Now, who do I think is going to be the impact player of the game? Uh, I think it's going to be this guy right here. The one and only Damani Jackson, man. Everybody, he's the big five-star recruit. He's the big-time cornerback. But as you see, he's different. His body is different. And I'm going to tell you guys this. The other day, uh, me and John Walker, you know, we were talking about him when we did our recap of Oregon State. He was only in there. He was in there for a few plays. But what I've seen, it's the same thing I've seen with Solomon Bird. When Solomon Bird, even though he was at the fourth string, third string, Solomon Bird came in there and, you know, he just looked different when he was making plays. And as a result, it's like you could not keep this guy off the field. He was an impact player. Damani, when he came in against Oregon State, what I've seen from him, my, I'm telling you, he, he was different. It just looked different. It felt different, and I mean, and I think everybody that's seen him play just a couple plays, you can you can see that immediate impact. Here he is, right here. Of course, you know when he uh, took the trip or whatever, he had, he put the uniform on, and he looked like he looked the part for sure. And then you see him here making that big hit on that uh, looks like the tight end there during the game. Uh, he came up, man. He made that stick. I think that's the play where he closed in on that ball so quick. And I said, man, that guy's different. So, look, my impact player of the game from our team is going to be Damani Jackson. The more he gets in, the more confident he gets, uh, the more comfortable he gets. And I think the coaches, you know, it's nothing they can do about it. By the time Utah game comes up, Damani might be starting. So that's it right there. So you guys hit me in the comment section. I need you guys to drop your score prediction down. Let me know what your score prediction is going to be. I'm going to go with 45 to 14. USC is going to win this game. You guys hit me back in the comment section. Let me know. Uh, let me know also who you think your impact player is going to be. I told you guys mine is Damani. Uh, so that, that's pretty much it for my preview. Uh, like, share, subscribe. USCJ32 on Instagram. USCJ32 on Twitter. Fight on, fight on, fight on.